100.9 FM. If you're having trouble listening outside of the Banksound area or anywhere in the world, put in the link to BACR.com. Ivan Rukavina, welcome to the show, mate. Oh, thank you, Paul. Mate, it's a pleasure having you on. You've, um, you've been busy, you've been writing a book, yeah. You've been writing a oh. book, we'll go to that very shortly, but your fighting career, Ivan, um, when did it all begin and where? I uh, uh, began uh, uh, in Sydney, it was back in uh, early uh, 83, yeah. 1983, and I was, uh, I started at uh, Newtown Mathurity. Yeah. Okay, and, we, and how, how many amateurs did you end up having? Because I was starting boxing, I started boxing in 85, and I've seen your name everywhere, and I used to think, how good is this guy? Honestly, all them years, but memory. Hey. Yeah, no, I have, I have no memory of that. Uh, I can what I call the under-51 amateur fight. Wow. You, know, you, rep- you represented quite a bit too, didn't you? Yeah, I did. You know, mm-hmm. My biggest achievement is when I win the King's Cup World Medal. You won the King's Cup World Medal in Bangkok? Yes, 1988. 1998. Wow, that was my last year of amateurs. I, I can remember seeing your name everywhere, mate. Uh, yeah. So that would have been uh, one of the highlights of your amateur career. Yeah, that was, you know, then I tried to make Olympics the, the same year, and I break my knuckle. I was bouncing to the nightclub, and uh, oh. I just <laughs> slapped the one guy across the face. You slapped him? You punched him, mate, yeah. if you break your knuckle. I just, I just slapped him, and... <laughs> kind of my uncle on the front finger and backwards and I tried to, you know, break the bone in. Yeah, geez, son. Um, and, and it took me out about 10 months, and then, uh, then I became professional. Yeah, so you never got to represent Australia at the Olympics, did you? But you went mighty close. Very close, yeah. Yeah, wow. Well. Okay. What do you do, mate? That's, that's the life. That's, that is life, isn't it, mate? Geez, what can you do? Yeah, then you turned, then you did turn professional, um... Mate, you turned professional way back in 1989. Uh, 89. 89, yeah. Geez, yeah. Would you say you had a better amateur career than boxing career, or would you say the same? Probably the same, you know. Yeah. Professional was much for me easier because my style is... Uh, I've been always training with professionals in yeah. professional gyms, and, uh, you know, and spot professional fighters, and my style was always with a professional. Yeah, okay. I see your first fight was against Joe Rebuka. Yeah, uh, there was a mismatch, you know, there was a first fight actually, but I was out for 10 months for nearly a year. Really? And then I, I didn't want to, uh, you know, jump up the, you know, be the. There was, first my fight was there, and I am also in the. I have only in Australia six fights, and all, all six fights I promoted myself, and, uh, and I fight myself. See, so after, after six fights, we uh, we lost you to America, didn't we? You had, the rest of your fights were over in the USA, is that correct? Yeah, USA, yeah. Yeah, you went, you went okay over there. You, you, should beat, you fought some good boys. Oh, yeah, the, you know, first fight, uh, Randy Hassan, he fought three times for the world title. Wow. And, I beat him every single round. He just swiped, made yeah. all the rounds. It was a tough fight, but you know, I beat him every round. And then yeah. They give him the decision, my the pure robbery, you know. You know how it is if you fight in someone's backyard. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. fight your opponent, you fight judges, you fight the referees, you fight everybody, my no, no, true, and if you knock them out, they'll revive them and uh, try and get them to get up. Um, yeah, you know, whatever, you know. Even in the eighth round, it took, the, it took the, like, more than two minutes break because he had a box all over his fights. And afterwards, when he went from the ring, they throw everything at him, like the people, you know, the booty. You know, <laughs> you know. who, who was your toughest fight, Ivan, in the pro ranks? Well, you know, because I was really tough. Ernie Magdaleno, uh, he was from uh, California. Yeah. And uh, he beat me, I mean, it's no question about it. That's the only fight what I can recall I lost. You yeah. know, there was no much in it, but I took the fight because I needed money and, uh, you know, and uh, so I will have the badly blue and I just took the fight. And, uh, yeah. 
Who was your best win? I say Martin Amarillos. He's the best yeah. ever boxer I've fought. He's good. He was an Olympic 78, and, uh, you know, he was flashy and a good fighter, you know. Yeah. How many fights did you end up having in the pros? Uh, I think 17. 17? Yeah. So fight, then I break my shoulder in ski oh, accident. Jeez. You had and some bad luck. Bad luck, exactly. You had some bad luck, mate. How many KOs did you have? Uh, I only have three KOs. Yeah. Because it's not easy to KOs when, the, when you fight. You, when you fight Mark, you just have no you know, yeah. But when you fight class, you fight, and that's not easy. You yeah. can't knock out the experience. Yeah. Very important. Okay, you've been, you've been around a lot. You're a true Croatian uh, down the heart. Who would you regard as Australia's best that you have ever seen? Jeff Fennick, no question yeah. about it. He's okay. Been, uh, he's been proud of Australia, you know. You can't go past Jeff Fennick, you know. can you? Yeah, you know, he can't, he can say whatever. Last time I was fighting, you know, very Michael, but you can't pass the Jeff Fennick, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Who was your, who was your trainer, Ivan, back in the day? Did you have a couple? Yeah, I have lots of, I haven't seen a couple of different guys, some guy from Sutherland Boys, Boys Club. But the boss helped me one Croatian guy in the night time. He was a heavyweight for the boxer. Yeah. It was a name I brought in, but he stayed in the beginning. Yeah, sure. And then afterwards, uh, I moved up to Melbourne. In Melbourne, I was training with Paul Ferrari, with uh, some guy named Charlie. Charlie, I had a lot of fights. He brought me a lot as well. Yeah. Okay, let's also, talk. So then I trained with him. Uh, Paul Gary, expensive driver. Mm -hmm. then, last my trainer was Donna Goodson. I never lost the fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very good. Okay, um, let's talk about your book. How long has the book just been released and where can we buy it? Not yet released. It's, it's a printing. It's all done. It's going to be next week, I think, ready to come all out. Yeah. Well, it's I'll it's tell you what, Ivan, it's gonna, it'll be a great read. Well, you yeah, have a lot of, you know, it's not only the books in the airlocks, or, uh, you know, the history of, you know, Croatia and with, you know, when we immigrated to Australia, how was it, and uh, also went to America, lived there for nine years, and, yeah. you know, my marriage, and uh, through the fights, and all that, you know, a lot of subjects, you see. How many pages full is it, mate? Is, I think, 262 pages. 260. And when it's out on the bookshelves, you'll let us know, won't you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Next week, I hope we're going to be, we're going to go pick it up. Okay, where, where did you, where did you say people can purchase a book? Uh, they have, it's not yet guaranteed, but I'm just going to give you the, just a second, the, the email address. Yeah. And then you can uh, uh, Adrian Commander, he's just uh, the Adrian Commander as well, text. Well, I can't. He's, uh, his email is, uh, uh, just like, uh... Well, I can't wait to get my hands on it, Ivan. Don't worry, Adrian Commander's uh, at the point. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mate, back to you. There'll be information on Facebook and there's uh, going to be a lot of public. Sure. And, uh, Oh, that's great. Because I don't care anyway, you know, as long as you pay, you get the money back, what I put in. Yeah. I'd be happy. Okay, um, I'm curious to know, back in 1989 when you won the gold medal at the Bangkok Kings Cup, who were your teammates? Who was the team captain? Uh, there was uh, Les Fier, he won yeah. the bronze medal. Yeah. He got beat by the Bulgarian in the, in the, in the in, semi-final. In the semi-final, who else was there? And there was one guy from Tasmania, his name is Guy, uh, guy uh, I can't remember his last name. Not, not uh, Crawford? Uh, probably, and also Steve, son Steve from New South Wales as well. Okay. Steve and also was... Uh, yeah, I always had my eye on these trips, but I just wasn't good enough amateur boxer to represent Australia. Three rounds wasn't enough for me, so I remember these teams getting picked. Pretty much the same, you know, I was always longer distance, you know. Yeah.
Well, Ivan, uh, mate, it's been great having you on the radio, mate, and uh, look forward to reading your book very soon. Oh, thank you, Paul, and uh, thanks to all of us, and thanks to Barry Michael for introductions, and, uh, and also to the Andrea Commander who write the text. Yeah, uh, it's always good running into you, Ivan. Always good to have thank a chat. Thanks, Mike. See you, uh, Ivan Rukavina. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Bye. Bye for now. And that was Ivan Rukavina, a champion in and out of the ring. Uh, you wouldn't want to upset him outside of the ring, I can tell you, but what a, what a champion guy. A uh, very interesting career in the book. I can't wait to have a read of that one. We'll be back uh, after this break.